Hi there, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to use error handling in AWS Step Functions. So in the last video, I just show you a demo, like a basic about the step function, how we can utilize the step function. And today I'll be showing you how we can do the error handling. Now I will just move on to the official guide given by the AWS. I will share the link of this document in the video description. So the most important thing in error handling in the step function is that like uh, all the states except the pass and wait states can encounter runtime errors except pass and wait. So we need to make it sure we are not uh, writing any uh, error handling in the pass and wait states. So it can happen due to various reasons are there that I mentioned over here. Uh, we can have a state machine definition issues are there. Uh, related to some choice state and all, or maybe due to some task failures, or due to some events, network-based events that because of that, some errors are happening. So by default also, it causes the execution failure, but in order to write some custom errors or something uh, related to the functionality, we can also write those errors over here. So if you see over here, there are different kinds of error names that are predefined are there. So we have this case sensitive strings are there known as the error names. So make it sure you mention it properly while utilizing this error names. So this is the states.all, a wildcard that matches any known error. So that is like, instead of defining something specific, we can define states.all and any branch failed, data limit exceeded. So you can have a, look into it, all these error names are there. Different kind of error names. Runtime, task will, timeout. So lots of options are there. And the most important thing, suppose if in any task, like some error is happening, we can uh, define this retrying after an error. So what tasks need to be retried, whether it need to be run parallelly, or what states need to be uh, mapped, or like how many retries you want to make it, so we can define in this. So you can see error equals if it is certain uh, array of strings that is matching that particular error name. So what to return and all we can also define and accordingly we can define the retry policy also and how many interval seconds. So this is the required one that is must interval seconds, max attempts, how many you can make it. So you can see maximum of up to this much number of nines, you can have a maximum number of attempts that you can have. And back of rate, these all are optional. The mandatory one was the error rate, error equals. So I will just show you, now there are many complex scenarios also there. So instead of showing you all this, I will just show you one simple, a basic one, uh, like error equals, and then what is the next state? Basically a fallback state I'll be showing you. So for this, uh, what we can do, just a small demo. So we can go to the, Lambda function, and let's create a function. We will use a built-in function. So use a blueprint, and you can type it over here, step function. So you can see throw a custom error, node.js, and you can define it over here, my step lambda error. That's it, and roll again, it's going to create over here. Let it create, later on we can add, attach the policies because it won't be able to execute the step function. So let's create this function first. It will take some time to create. So we can just go to the code. So you can see the code over here. So custom error, what's the message?
So you can see this dot name, custom error, this is the name. So custom error, that is the name and the message that will be shown. So before that, let me save this Lambda function and we can deploy. And then we can test. So just, I will just put over here some even name and just so we want to see. So you can see this is a custom error. So our Lambda is complete over here. We can later on, we can go to the configuration Let me show you one thing over here on the top. So you can see this is the execution role that is being attached. So I will just go to this one. Basically it takes you to the IEM. So here, I'm going to, by default, you can see basic execution is there. There is no permission for the step function. So I'll just type it over here. Step function. Let me remove the space. Let me just put over here step. So you can see step function. I'm just going to give the full access. Okay, now I will go to my step functions, create a state machine over here. I will just take a standard one. Oh, just you can also take it, uh, run a sample project or something like that. So I'm just taking a standard one. So this is basically over here. So you can You can just click next. So this is the JSON format is there. So we can also delete the code snippet. So I'm just uh, pasting from the site itself that includes the whole code. So I'll just paste it over here. That's it. So I just need to make my Lambda AL to the different one, the latest one that I have created. So I can take it from here. You can see, copy, and then just change this portion. Okay. Then next, so that is that my state machine error. It's also creating just you can click next, next. It's similar to the one that I've done in my previous video, just this one is for the error. So before, okay, let's, uh, let's go to the edit mode before running it. I just want to explain. So you can see there's a comment over here. And let's just start at hello world. And then it is going to perform a task. And that is a lambda it is going to evoke. Then it this is a timeout of two seconds. And then after that, it catches if any something goes wrong, error equals to if it's state dot timeout is mentioned over here. So I can just define it over here. Custom error. That's it. And then that's it. Next state is the fallback. I will save this one. Now let's execute.
So you can see over here, it has executed, it has forwarded to the file pack and then end. Now if I click over here, you can see task state entered, lambda scheduled. So basically the uh, timeout something was there and then lambda failed. So it is just basically giving you the details. Custom error has happened over here. So you can see over here, lambda scheduled, timeout in seconds two, lambda function started after that, and then failed. So this is how we can utilize this. So you can see over here the details and caught the error. Timeout seconds too. And we can see the definitions over here. And we can see the sequence of events that has happened over here. So you can incorporate the same thing in my previous examples if you want. This is a graph view, this is the table view. You can see error and then went to the next one. Now, if I make some changes over here, let's say if I change my lambda function over here. Let me do one thing with the code. If I just go there. Okay. If I put it over here and custom error. Okay, this is the execution results. So I will just put it over here, the name as end custom error or anything you can put over here. And then you can go to the file, save, and first deploy it. Then only you will be able to see the changes. Still not deployed. I need to click back again. It takes some time to deploy also. Test. Okay. So it's done now. Now if I go back to my step function, if I new execution, So you will find over here, it will stop. So you can see, so it's not able, it's not equal to that and custom, this is a custom error. Basically it's not able to uh, do a fallback because in the, if you see, look at the JSON file over here. Let me go to the edit state machine. Uh, before that, you can see the step of executions. That's it, it failed and then it's stopped. It doesn't go into the next state. So if I go to the state machine over here, you can see it's clearly mentioned over here. Error equal to custom error if something happens. That is not, that is n custom error I have defined in the lambda function. So it's next fallback, it's not able to call. That's why we get stopped over here in the hello world. So this is how we can do the error handling. We can define the timeouts of certain states. Lots of things we can do quite efficiently. Just uh, you can have a guide over here. Lots of things are mentioned over here. Demos are also given over here how we can utilize this. Uh, even how we can handle a failure using the cache, uh, timeout. Lots of things are mentioned over here. Just uh, calling a Lambda function and then you can do all those steps easily. So I hope you have understood this error handling. In my upcoming video, I'll be talking about the app sync and amplify studio and all please do like share and subscribe to my channel thanks for watching